This is a drill press and it'll be common to most machine shops. Most drill presses have similar features as this one shown in the picture. This one has a base, a column, a table, a drilling head with an electric motor on the back, a speed selection lever on the front, an on-off switch, a lock, a depth stop, a spindle. On the end of this spindle there is a Jacobs chuck and a feed lever. This drill press is very common to most machine shops and this particular one happens to be a bench model because it's meant to sit on top of a bench. It could also be a floor model and would have a longer column in the back of it. Please notice on the base there are slots in there and they're meant to hold a T-nut so we can actually bolt something to the base with the table moved out of the way such as a long piece. Please notice that the table is actually locked to the column. If you unlock it, you can slide the table up and down the column. You can slide it around the column. The table will also pivot on its own center point or axes. And often the table will tilt off of horizontal. Not all drill presses will have these features, but these are common to most drill presses. Please note on this drill press that if you loosen the lock on the table that there is no rack and pinion on the column. In other words, that table will just fall. So you need to be very, very careful having your hands underneath it because it may just fall down to where the base is. This is what's known as a sensitive drill press. In other words, the only feed it has is the feed that you provide on the hand wheel or hand lever here. Uh, this is very common to smaller drill presses. Often the spindle will have a Jacobs chuck in it. It is meant to hold drills typically up to half inch in diameter or what we call a straight shanked drill bit. You will notice beside the hand lever there is a threaded rod there which is uh, a depth stop. So you screw the nut up or down and it will uh, set the depth or the length that that spindle will come out. On uh, the bottom of it, uh, I would like you to notice that where the drill chuck is, that the spindle, as it is exposed, its purpose is to provide the up and down movement. Sometimes they call it a quill. It does not revolve. So if you were to expose that spindle and grab it with your hand, it would not turn. Only the drill chuck on the end turns. It's turning in a mechanism inside the spindle. On the very top of the drilling head, you will notice on this particular one, there's a lever on the front of it, and this is meant to set the different speeds. Now this is meant to be set with the machine running. In other words, it has a split pulley in it, which is spring-loaded, forcing the belt to go towards the outside diameter of the pulley or towards the inside, changing the RPM of the drilling machine. Some smaller models will have a set of multiple pulleys on top and the idea is to move the belts between the pulley on the spindle and the pulley that will be on the motor in the back. Again, this is a sensitive drill press, very common to most machine shops. This is an upright drill press, which is another type of drill press. And it uh, will have very similar features to the sensitive drill press. This particular one is a floor model, which most of them are. And uh, it has quite a heavy duty table on it. Please notice on the back of the table, there actually is a rack and pinion for the table to move up and down. So this one, will you won't have to worry about it um, falling to the base when you loosen it. If we have a look up at the drilling head, you'll notice that there's no Jacobs chuck in this. This one is better suited to larger diameter drills or tapered shank drills. Although you could put a tapered shank in with a Jacobs chuck on the other end. One really nice feature about this drill press is if I pull the feed handle towards me or away from the drilling head, it will actually start to feed as long as the feed is engaged. It will have several different feed ranges per revolution that you can set. On the other side of it, there will be a selection of RPMs, which is in a geared head. So you'll be able to move the handle between different speeds. Having a closer look at the drilling head of the upright drill press, Again, you will notice there's nothing in the spindle. It'll be tapered on the inside, typically a Morris taper, to accept drill bits larger than half inch in diameter. You will notice the depth stop with the clamp on it. And at the bottom of the depth stop, you will see that handle on the far side. That's the feed and gauge lever. So as the depth stop comes down and hits it, it shuts the feed off. 
Just in behind the feed handle, you will notice a little dial there that will set different uh, feed rates per revolution of the spindle. Looking at the far side of the upright drill press drilling head, you can see a better view of the feed and gauge lever. Above it is an on-off switch. This particular model has two speeds forward, so a low and a high speed forward, and a low and a high speed in reverse, so either clockwise or counterclockwise from the position that uh, switches in. You will notice just behind it the red lever. This is the speed selection lever. Depending on what position the red uh, ball is in, whether it's forward or reverse, if it's pulled in or out, it will give you several different speed ranges in the low speed range from the on-off switch and the high speed range from the on-off switch. Towards the back of it, you'll notice a couple of locking levers which lock the drilling head to the column. If they're loosened, this drilling head can be moved up and down the column. Again, the upright drill press will have power feeds and it typically, and this model does have, a geared head. This is a mill drill and it's a really nice machine to have in your machine shop. It's basically a combination between a milling machine and a drill press. The spindle will have a taper in it that you can put uh, different uh, type of tooling in it. In this case I believe there's an end mill sitting in the end of it. The table also will have hand controls on it so you can move the table at a set feed rate rather than just loosening a clamp on the column. Here's a closer look at the table of the mill drill. This is the large drill press that will be found in most machine shops. It's a radial arm drill press. It has a base that's hollow that will hold coolant. On top of the base there's a table. In behind the table there's a column that the radial arm will actually move up and down, swivel around the column, and it has a drilling head on the radial arm that will move in and out. This will have several different speed ranges as well as feed rates. You will pull the handles away from the drilling head to engage the feed. You will notice in the bottom of the spindle it is meant to hold larger drill bits or tapered shank drill pits such as a Morris taper drill bit. It also could hold a drill chuck if it had a Morris taper on the other end. Here's a closer view of the drilling head on the radial arm with a large drill bit, a tapered shank drill bit in the spindle. This is a multi-spindle drilling attachment which has been attached to the spindle of the radial arm drill press and bolted to the table of the radial arm drill press. The idea with this is as the spindle turns multiple drill bits down at the bottom rotate and we can drill several holes with one pass down. Here's a closer view of the multi-drilling head attachment. Again power is coming down the spindle it's being distributed out to multiple drill bits. This is for production work so you would have a whole bunch of parts that need to have the same drill pattern done on and this would speed up the drilling process considerably. Just a quick recap, we had a look at the sensitive drill press which is one of the smaller drill presses that will be found in the machine shop. It has no power feeds and typically a drill chuck in the spindle. The upright drill press is a larger drill press which will have a taper in the spindle to accept larger drill pits. It usually will have a geared head on it and is quite a bit more beefier than the sensitive drill press. Then we had a look at the mill drill which is a combination between a drill press and a milling machine. Last but not least we had a look at the radial arm drill press which is the larger of the drill presses able to accommodate very large work.